Okay, so as we went through most of the modules so far, let's go back to the modulation of muscle force production. And let's go all the way back to one of the first things we learned in the course, and that torque is equal to force times the moment arm. And when we're talking about the internal torque, we're talking the force, we're talking about the muscle force, and the moment arm is the perpendicular distance from the joint center to the line of the muscle force. Okay, moment arm can change between people. Some people are well endowed with good moment arms and they can generate more torque. But most of us are focusing on muscle force, right? We're trying to train to increase muscle force. And so let's look at the way, the factors that modulate muscle force production and which ones we can train and which ones we can't. Okay, so let's look at these factors that contribute to muscle force modulation or this concept of volume control of our, our muscle force production. And some of these we can train and some of these we can't. So the first one is architecture. How do muscle muscles in parallel contribute to force production? How do, um, I'm sorry, sarcomeres in parallel contribute to muscle force production? How do sarcomeres in series contribute to muscle force production? How does penation angle contribute? What is the relationship of penation angle to fiber packing? Force length relationship, very applied on how we can train people, right? Because you can change the force length relationship of certain muscles to force the um, load or the torque requirement to another muscle. Force velocity, force is modulated by velocity dependent on the type of muscle contraction, which brings us to the next number four. Concentric, we are the weakest in concentric contractions, followed by isometric, followed by eccentric. Motor unit size, how big a motor unit is, um, affects force production. Now the question is, can you train motor unit size? Recruitment, you can definitely recruit more motor units, and that's a neural adaptation that you can train your body to recruit all the motor units that are in your body. And when we say rate coding, you need to add all right, when you say recruitment, you need to add rate coding. As we recruit new motor units, you can increase the rate coding to also get a bump in force production. Motor unit type, fast twitch versus slow twitch. They have different force production capabilities. Then I put SSC as kind of a, a global number nine, but there are four mechanisms within that SSC, right? You should be able to explain each mechanism that contributes to that stretch shortening cycle. One of those mechanisms, and I'm putting this separate, are the passive components, right? How does the SEC or the tendons and the PEC or the mesiums contribute to muscle force production? And then also the physiologic cross-sectional area or hypertrophy. If we increase the size of the muscle fibers, we will increase the sarcomeres in parallel and you will increase force production. Now the question becomes, can we do hyperplasia, which is adding new muscle fibers. Um, I think there's enough data to say that we can, but um, it's still being debated.